Let this rain out quite a bit of value. And at this point, we're safe this round. Even Yurden won't save him anymore because we've got a lot of actually damaged things getting set up here. So I think we. The question is then, what do we do for round two? He's actually used a lot of provisions. He's used Yalmar. Yeah, he knows that this game's going to be really difficult, and that'll be GG. So it's been a little bit since we played Rain. When it first came out, the last set of cards, a lot of people played Rain, and there was a lot of stuff with Falmar and Ryogan the Undying, people getting their clips. You'd bring back Ryogan and get trigger all the Rain, all the Storm from Falmar, do tons of damage, get a huge swing, and it made for a lot of interesting clips, and it was pretty fun to play. But I wanted to take a little bit before we came back to Rage of the Sea with the Rain deck. So I wanted to give it time for people to settle in and actually start playing Control in less greedy decks. And now we're going to go back to it and see what it actually does in a more stable game state when there's, everyone's not just trying out new stuff, because I think it's good. But you'll notice here when we get to the deck list that we're running the Get In Yith version instead of Fulmar. I think it's better. Um, and we're also not running Ryogan the Undying. We'll talk about, I guess we'll talk about that first while we're not running. So you'll notice right away we're not running the Fulmar. And we're not running Ryogan the Undying. The two main things here. Reason one for Fulmar is essentially here to fit Fulmar, you have to cut either Onomancy, Get In Yith, Fuchsia, or Heatwave. Potentially you can cut Defender, but with the amount of reliance you have on the reins and really tall bronzes, like your Messengers, see, I think you really want to keep the Covenant of Steel in your deck. So that I don't really consider that one. You, so you can you don't want to lose Onomancy because you need the consistency, right? Especially if you're playing something like um, something like this, you really want the consistency because you want to see Malusine and other cards like Messenger of the Sea in particular. You definitely want to see early. So you want the Onomancy. Fuchsia you really also want because you want to bring back either Malusine, Covenant of Steel, or when I first saw this card, I thought the main use would be bringing back the Messenger of the Sea. It turns out it's not what people do with it, but it's another really strong option you can do. And then lastly, you can cut Gedneath. Now this is one, this is where I ran Fulmar previously. I ran with Fulmar instead of Gedneath. And it was alright, but it just didn't do enough for me that I think Gedneath was just, Gedneath has performed better. Fulmar's not bad, but I think you have to take out Gedneath for it. Heatwave you can take out as well, by the way, if you want to drop provision somewhere. But there's so much... Oh, there's not that ton, but there's a lot of stuff where you need the heat wave to answer something. And particularly dangerous threats. Like I see a fair amount of Caltellus and you need this to answer that. And stuff like that. So that's why we have heat wave in here. Essentially, Fulmar could fit in either the Gennyeth or Karanthi heat wave slot. And then Ryo the Undying. There's just too much graveyard heat. Like he, it gives the opponent a very proact well, it gives the opponent a very strong target to banish. Now you argue that, well, yeah, you could banish Malusine, but the difference is here, the Ryogan the Undying starts in your discard pile, and then right away they'll just banish it. They'll drop a squirrel round one or something on it. Whereas with Malusine, if you win round one with Malusine, which is usually usually what you want to do, win round one with it, and you immediately resurrect it round two, so they can't banish it, and that's what you do. Um, it's more vulnerable to Heat Wave that way as well, if you resurrect it right away, but you can dodge the graveyard banish it. And the other thing is, you don't really need Malusine here. This is no longer relying on just three rounds of Malusine, so... If they banish Miss Lucine, that's kind of okay, although obviously you don't want them to. But it's harder for them to do it immediately. And then you're not always going to have Malusine round one. If you don't have it round one, then you play it round two. And then goes your discard pile. Usually if you don't have it round one, they're pushing you round two is what's happening. And then you win the round two, you survive the push, you resurrect it right away. So, real gone the Undying, the other thing is it's eight provisions. And most of my games, I've found that, if you think about it, real gone the Undying... Gives you no ex it's like it's like um, unseen elder. It gives you no extra value. Well, unseen elder in that if you have the devotion, it gives you no extra value. The value just comes faster. It's the same thing with Ryogan the Undying. The value just comes faster. You get the same amount of value from the rain and storm eventually. And the argument is that what happens is even if the opponent the opponent if you're setting this up like set up a bunch of rain, so you got like eight turns of rain out, and you're waiting for your last play to fuchsia this back. They're just going to banish it, and then, your last, and then all that rain goes to waste. So, I don't want to end up overstacking on rain when it's just going to give me no value. And that's eight provisions, I thought. this is These provisions went into the heat wave. We um, cut Ryogan the Undying and dropped two five-provision bronzes to four, so we fit in heat wave. I think it's overall stronger. 
but if you want to run it, I won't blame you at all. It's very fun and it's still a very strong option. I just found that too often it was being interfered with and there's too much graveyard hate, especially coming out early because if they banish it early, then you kind of are stuck with, if you have a lot of rain, you have to replay the rain earlier and that might not be optimal. So that, that's just the thing. I'm, I could be wrong. It just in my games, it seemed like Heat Wave was more valuable than this. So now into the actual cards in the deck. Got those two big things out of the way. Like I said, Order Master Consistency, Crystal Scholars, mostly this is from Lucene Cultist, who I actually quite like now after his buff. And we have the Gedneath. Gedneath's really strong. It just it, it offers a deck something it doesn't have otherwise if you have Fulmar instead. And that's you play this, and it stops the opponent. A lot of your stuff you want to play late. Like Fulmar, you want to play pretty late, so you transform a bunch of rain into Storm, but not too late. Makes him a little awkward sometimes. But Gedneath, you just throw down. And if they heat wave it, fantastic. You're not losing Malusin. It's a heat wave at least. If they don't answer it, you get out nice druids, and it spawns a lot of points worth of value. That's quite nice. And people don't always expect this. It's just a really good play. It sets up so much value. And yeah, that's about it. It's not so much to say about it. I just quite like it in it. If you look at the deck, a lot of things are going to be reactive, and this is one of the few proactive things you can do. So having a really strong proactive play is really important, especially when getting pushed around two, which is kind of a weakness these decks tend to face sometimes. You get pushed around two, and then they banish something. The Heat Wave, you're Lucy, and they, you didn't resurrect it yet, they banish it from your discard pile, and your round three is weak, because they'll keep pushing. And then you want to stop that so you can set stuff up. So yeah, I like having the uh, Gedneath. Yusha's fantastic, super strong. Uh, several good options here. Malusian's clearly the best choice most of the time, but you also Covenant of Steel, you can bring back the Defender if you haven't played Malusian, for example, or you want to set up protection for Gedaneath, although usually that's not the most important thing, because losing Gedaneath is not the end of the world, because you still have the one engine out. And then Messenger of the Sea. Messenger of the Sea is like the key card of this deck, it's the card you really want living. Um, you just, you don't want the opponent killing it. Well, not necessarily killing it, because you can bring it back, you don't want them banishing it, that's what I meant to say. So the Covenant of Steel for Defender, right brings back whatever, same, basically the same targets as Fuchsia. Although you summons and Fuchsia plays, so Fuchsia's better, but right is there as well. Bride of the Sea to replay right, although with the Fuchsia you no longer have to use Bride of the Sea to, re to replay right. Against dangerous stuff, I replay Giga Scorpion Coction quite frequently, as well as replaying Freya's Blessing got Messenger of Sea strong as well. Really nice. Decoction for 6 damage, pretty self-explanatory. Also kills something with 5 and shield, very useful. Grimace for Purify. The Purifying Defender is really nice. Purifying your own doomed cards from Freya's Blessing is really good too. This is especially true of stuff like the Messenger of the Sea, because you're going to want Messenger of the Sea as much as possible, right? So you play it, they kill it, you Freya's Blessing it back, you Purify it with Grimace. Ideally you have Grimace out, because a lot of times you have Grimace out, and then you play the Messenger of the Sea, they kill it, you Freya's Blessing get back, that resets Gremis' Purify, then you Purify it off, and you can won't get banished, you can keep playing it, it's quite nice. Moosting Cultist, really good setup. It's one of the few, like I said, there's not very many proactive cards in the deck. There's certainly more than there used to be, which is nice, but there's not a ton still. It's not like you're playing Northern Realms and everything's an engine, you just keep setting them up and setting them up. You have some engines and some payoff engines, like Messenger of the Sea is really a big one. But this sets stuff up. If the opponent doesn't answer, it's worth a ton of value, because you get the reins. And just remember that you want to make play this in the row you think the opponent's going to play stuff across from, or if they already have something across from it, so you can get that boost effect going if you can. Cutting Slash for control, really solid here, especially because of the rain. Well, usually you'll have two damaged units, because the rain will damage two things by one. Quite helps setting up the Bloodthirst. And then we have two neutral bronzes I ran, Spores and Squirrel. Reason being here, there's two options here. I could either run these, or we could run the Crow Clan Preacher. Wherever, we click the right number here. The other option I had was Crow Clan Preacher. Cloak, wow. Crow Clan Preacher for the engine value. But then if you're running that, I think you just want to run with, instead of Rage of the Sea, you just want to run with the um, the one that spawns Marindrome. I think you want to do that instead. It's certainly an option, and it is another engine you could set up, but I thought overall we'd get more value from these two, because we don't actually have room for Xavier, for fitting in Heatwave, and Owner Mancy, so we have very high uh, provisions in several cards here, Fusion, Gedneath as well. So we had to put into four point bronzes, and I went with Squirrel for Graveyard Control because no Xavier. 
we don't we can only banish one card from the graveyard, but we have Heat Wave to banish something on the field. And then to get to something, we do have Grammas for Purify, and we can answer stuff. So the big thing here is if they play something like uh, which is Sabbath Keltullus, you can banish the Keltullus and be okay. And you just have the one banish here if they're playing an Echo card. So we have that. And then Spores. Spores is really nice for two reasons. Normally you have it for the big reset, right? Opponent goes tall, you reset it. But the nice thing is here, you actually have several units you can heal with your Spores if you don't have another target. The little half ruse we'll get to, the Hermits, although Hermits usually be less because it's going to heal itself. But little half you can heal itself after the 4 damage, it's not bad. You can get that value out if there's going to be no targets, say against um, Skellige Witchers. If they're not playing the Mentor, you might not have a target, you can heal something up. And obviously they damage it. But with the biggest one, clearly it's going to be Melusine. If you get Melusine's order off quite a few times, you can reset her with Spores. Obviously, that's the, not, not the main use of it, but it's a secondary use, which makes it me much happier, including in the deck. Then we have Hermit for our Druids and the Little half Brews. Little half Brews are great setup cards, just like the Melusine Cultists, although they're more likely to live, which is quite nice as well, since they're at 6. And then remember if the opponent damages this, that you can click the order and get value from overkilling it with its self-damage. You get more value that way. But this is the deck that we're going to go with today. Should be pretty interesting. Uh, this is more of a, it's not a very, it's not as high a ceiling as previous versions, right, with Ryogan, the Dying, and Falmar. The ceiling of points is less, but I think it's much safer, and it'll be more consistent in the long run. So let's take a look at how it does. Let's find a game here. Hopefully we find something not too crazy. We should be able to answer most things. Um, the biggest things we're afraid of is Yurden. Also this deck. The Reckless Flurry decks have a ton of control, so they can answer a lot of our stuff, which would be very annoying. We have Messenger of the Sea, we have Freya's Blessing, we're going to need this, but we're gonna, going to want Grammas as well. Squirrel, probably not going to get much value here, so I'm going to put that back. Don't think he's really going to have anything. And then we have Geddon, yes, we are going second. We could push with Gedanyeth, like set up Gedanyeth and then go Moosing Cultist Hermit. Not the biggest fan. I don't think we really need that much control, so I'll put a Gutting Slash back just thinking about our strategy here. Uh, we have Onomancy for our Malusine. He's probably running... These decks usually run, do, run to, don't run to Devotion because they like to play some of the Witchers. I'm assuming it's going to be a Witcher deck with Geralt Yurden. I've also seen some... What's it called? The Uma's Curse Lippy decks, or Shoop Lippy decks. Some of those actually run Reckless Flurry now. Although I haven't seen very many of that. Let's see what he goes for here. I think... Our issue this game is going to be, he's going to... What these decks like to do is they win round one with high tempo, and then they push you round two to use up your big cards, and then in round three they have some decent finishers. And the round two control is usually problematic. So we don't want that to happen to us. So I think we want to win this round. That's not a very high tempo play, so maybe we go for the Gedanyeth Cultists. I like that option. The reason we go for the Gedanyeth Cultist here is I want the Malus... Well, this is also opposite here, so the Cultists start boosting. But I want him to... Because a lot of his big cards, right, like the Bear Witchers, the Girl Ken into the Bear Witcher, stuff like that, actually has a fair... They actually need Adrenaline. So if we set up earlier, he won't be able to use some of his control tools on us. He might have to use Leader Charges. The Junod we obviously have to watch out for as well. Then by putting a... We know that he's going to make two crows with this mask. It's likely that also he's probably just melee. We just have to watch out for Coral. Coral might present too many points. We actually don't have the Scorpion Decoction or Bloodthirst or set up on the Gutting Slash yet. So we'll go for the Malusian Cultist, then Malusian Cultist, then Messenger of the Sea, I think, in that order. We're committing quite a bit here. Little half for... Okay, he's actually running a decent amount of rain himself. You could kiss my tail Interesting. Uh, I want Malusian Cultist here. 
most Skellige players I see tend to run Gutting Slasher control. And without the Bloodthirst yet, I don't want to fill the melee row too much here, so we'll put these here. But, like I said, he's not going to have that set up, so 5 damage in Skellige is something they don't always have. Although, obviously, Leader Charge could hit us. But I could also just set up the Bloodthirst for it, too. But then he's used that charge, and the danger for the round 2 push is usually these charges being, being there to answer everything you play. So we have to keep that in mind, and then we go... We'll play Cultist again next turn, and then hopefully this one lives and it'll boost this to a 6. He might kill it then, though. And then we go for the Messenger of the Sea. I want to set these up before Malusine. So we can finish the Gedanyeth. That's the idea. And then we can put the Malusine. Okay, he's going to go for the Mushy Truffle. Okay, so he's actually going to be playing a lot of little half crews. Interesting. It's not a bad plan. There's the rain. So he's setting up the Gutting Slasher, I think. But this one will let us put Marindrome out. So that'll be good. We're going to Marindrome this one so he can't Gutting Slash it. And then we'll put this rain out and get some boosts going. Obviously, there's a good chance he's running Axie here, but if he resets our Cultists, that's fine. I think we want to go Malusian before Messenger, because Malusian gives us carryover, carryover potential. We could also go for the Messenger and a Leader Charge. It's not bad, too. We want to make sure we get past 6, because he's going to have Gunning Slash. Malusian's not the best card in this matchup, because they usually run Junod. And as soon as you click Malusine, you lose like 20 points later on. Stuff like that's why I think our matchup's best one if we go for this round one push. Let's see what he wants to do. If he plays low tempo here, I might go for Messenger. Because we can click the Occultist order. That's pretty low tempo. Yeah, we're gonna. There's the golden froth. We're gonna go for the messenger. And we'll put Malusine out later on. As we put this out, he takes four damage. We get four boosts. And then we also get two boosts here, so we'll go up. Go like this. Uh, messenger, we'll just throw in here. I don't want the one cultist getting too tall. This deck is also the kind of duck that plays Yurden. So if we can force him to use it this round, that would be a nice boost to our chances of winning the game. Next turn we go for Malusine. He has to do something for us to get another turn. So, um, let's go. It actually wouldn't be too bad of an option. Just throw out a leader charge here. If he, if he plays a high tempo card, we'll throw out a leader charge here. So we can stay ahead on even. Because it'll get us two more points from these. Okay, there's Yalmar. We'll, we could fray us blessing. That was enough damage to kill us. Oh, we got leader charge out. That's good. Still clicking. This is exactly what we want. Okay. We'll just go with my plan. We'll go Leader Charge and bring out Malusine. He's using Leader Chargers here, which means he feels threatened. And I like that he's threatened. So we'll do this. I want to boost Messenger up quite a bit if possible. And we'll go for Owner Mancy into our Malusine here, wherever she is. Um, Covenant of Steel wouldn't be a bad choice either here, but I like the Malusine. And that should help quite a bit. We don't have any damage things left, right? So that she goes back to a 6 is fine, because he needs to hit a combination of two of Malusine, Cultist, Preacher, and Siren in order to activate Gutting Slash. He might go for that if he's holding it. 
Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Normally, you don't want Malusine here getting boosted, just because she's going to be really tall anyway. But I didn't want to put her next to this, because this would die. So that leaves us a choice of here between these two and between these two. And obviously, I want her next to the cultist to refresh her order. So that's why she went here. If you get Scorpion Decoction, might come out here as well. He might also be playing that. Nope, tried the grasses. Uh, there's no Gremist. So if we play her with Freya's Blessing, she's staying dead. But again, if Freya's Blessing on her secures the round, we get Odomancy back next round. I'm thinking we might not need her yet. We can just go Hermit. Hermit's pretty solid. Let's click this and go Hermit. We get more value than normal from Hermit here because we still have an armor on this cultist. Mark not the creeds of others. It's neither polite nor safe. And still up by 13. I would like to I'd preferably like the Messenger of the Sea to be an option from Freya's Blessing Ground 2, because she's so vital to the deck. If we win this round, we can open the next round with uh, Fuchsia of Malusine. And then Malusine will get banished and we'll set up the Rain Engine. Just because I think we'll... I think he... The question is if he's running any Graveyard Punish or not. These decks... Uh, most decks have a Xavier in them now, so I think we would want we would want to do that. Open Fuchsia Malusine. Sets up quite a bit of points. We'll get Junauded. Then we can write back the Malusine again. I think that's our plan. Oh, here's his fuchsia. Uh, he had no units in his discard. Oh, that's just a, I don't think he's coming back from that. So we'll just play Gutting Slash. I guess we kill off fuchsia. Put this rain out, quite a bit of value. And at this point, we're safe this round. Even Yurden won't save him anymore, because we've got a lot of actually damaged things getting set up here. So I think we've... The question is then, what do we do for round two? He's actually used a lot of provisions. He's used Yalmar. Yeah, he knows that this game's going to be really difficult, and that'll be GG. Let's find game two then. That first one, perfect example of how I want to think of the deck. That's why Gedding gets in it. For stuff like that, you can apply so much pressure with it. I think it's more valuable than Falmar, especially earlier on. Okay, this this could be an issue. Be um, to probably Vi. Could be you. Succubus. Could also just be playing Death Wish, but haven't seen that really at all. And going second against that is not what we want. We do have one Squirrel, which I think will actually... He's probably playing Odomancy, so I think this might be useful. Other than that, though, we actually are missing all of our big cards. So we're going to need some good draws here. One thing to keep in mind is if it's Vi, a rain, a leader charge rain plus this kills off one of his consumed cards. Uh, these are nice. Probably not Hermit. Probably not Freya's Blessing. Fuchsia, we still need a good card. Got an opener card. We have little half room in these, but that's not going to cut it. Messenger of the Sea is fine. I guess we lose Squirrel. Little half is better open with the Malusian Cultist because they won't dodge the row opposite. So we'll go a little half through. The Crystal Skull is really from Malusian Cultist, so we're going to hold off on that. If he wants to Parasite this, that's fine. There's the Haunt, so it's going to be a problem. We actually are running plenty of cards to answer this, right? We have our own. We have running Ondermancy Heatwave, among other things, but actually not going to be able to answer this is going to mean we're going to lose this round on even. Unless we get something crazy with Messenger of the Sea, which is our only real hope here. Knowing that, I'll set up this little half room. You can kiss my tail, goodbye. And then next turn we'll go, once there's two units here, we can go for just an early messenger. That's going to be our only hope, I think, if it's Vi. And then the other thing is, if it, if it is Vi, usually they don't run control, especially the Haunt versions. Looks like we might actually just be against Deathwish here. We'll see. Same more engine setup. 
Each turn we wait on Messenger, we're losing out, but I also want to go up a little bit. So... I think we'll use one of the little half roost orders here. We are running a Spores as well, which would have been nice to draw. I guess we go here. Do we do it now or do we wait? Doing it now means our cultist is giving us its order value, so it's not too bad. It's basically the same. And then now we'll put the spell on him. The one point boost here means that we're getting the same value as if we waited and put this on two units. There's the Archispore. There's Barghest. Interesting. So we have this cultist. I think it's time we throw it on Messenger of the Sea. So we'll put this order out. Messenger goes to 7 here. Pretty nice. I don't want her going to 8 just because that looks like a Scorch or Igni thing. And she's going to be our real, our only real chance this round. We might have to Freya's Blessing her. Is this just pure Death Witch? It's really interesting if it is. These are going to get him tons of points. Interesting. We'll go for this, obviously, here. The um, little half through. So that's 4 damage, plus 4, and that puts us to 31. Right now we're down by 16, so that puts us to down by 8. And... I don't care if we go down to 4 cards. At all. Because our log round's really good. Especially if we haven't played anything big yet. So we'll just drop this uh, cultist in. Lead us across with Lead us through storms. Like if he just passes and we go to four, that's fine with me. It'll also be a draw right now, because we have these two cultists boosting. If he has some kind of five damage card, it's going to kill off our Malusine cultist here. We could have put the cultist next to our um, other cultist, so it got boosted. But I want to see if we can get Messenger C big enough to deny him dominance on this Vargas. Mm, that's annoying. Like I said, Messenger C is our really only option to win this round. We still have rain value from cultists, though. So like this and this is fine. We still have four damage next turn on him. So it goes down to 37, we can Gutting Slash something. Especially if we Gutting Slash the Bargus and it gets hit by Rain. That would be our optimal choice here. Because we have the two damage things, so this is 6. We didn't get the Bargus, that's okay. Leader Charge wouldn't be too bad here. Noonwraith. Yeah, okay, there we go. That, that was the other option I was thinking. Is it could be one of the Clog, Rat Clog decks. That's basically what we're going up against then. So how do we deal with this? We just have to win round one. I don't really care what we do. We have to win round one, and the best way to do that is by playing this decoction, which makes our Bright Sea come online. Because Fuchsia and Wright both have no targets right now, so... Also, we get two points by killing this. He could be running Glusty Warp to, and use that to win the round. If I do kill us and give ourselves two rats. If we give ourselves two rats by doing this, he consumes them. We lose two, he gets four. I don't want to do that. Instead, we'll just hit this down and try and keep him off of that uh, dominance. We could have thrown a leader charge out right to row one. But I don't want to use two reader charges because we need one to activate Bride. I don't want to have to use a second one also to make our Bride next turn because it would have ticked down by one here. So we do this. Look at our cultist some boosting. And we play our Bride. Again, I want to keep the dominance. So we'll go here. And we'll hit this down. 
And that should pretty much secure this round. Yeah. So the thing is here, as long as we force out his rat combo, we should be fine. We are missing Melusine, but a drawing it to Gedanyeth here is kind of what I want. Getting at their own Evergancy, pretty good chance of that. Okay, these aren't fantastic, but um, actually the Phrase Blessing is kind of really good. I don't really want this Hermit though. Covenant of Steel is really solid as well. Um, we want this Messenger to see back, but I want a way to make rain. So this can bring back Messenger, this can bring back a way to make rain. And then we have this to purify. I'm not sure we need the Frizz Blessing. I want to redraw because I want Gadney at their own and I think this is the card to redraw. Okay, Spores is not the card I wanted to see, but it's not the worst thing. Do we open Covenant or do we open Fuchsia? I want to open Covenant. I'll set this Defender. We, since we know he's playing Ratclog, we just have to, we can't let that happen. Whatever round he chooses to do that in, if it's a long round, we'll lose. So I want him to do it now. And then the thing is, we have this Spores for the Gurnikora. Or not Gurnikora, I could play Gurnikora. The Glusty Warp if he plays it. But he's going to last play it, so we'll dodge the Spores on that. But for example, if he saves it to round 3, and then goes for it, we have the Spores. If he hits us with like a um, Parasite or something, we can Spores too. I don't think this deck runs Predatory Dive. Otherwise, we'd be a little more careful here. And we want to make sure we know what row he's playing on so we can Fuchsia the rain on that row and break our Messenger. There's the first Noon Wraith. The sun. We have access to several more turns of rain so i don't mind if we just if he put rain here then he stops playing on that row so we'll just do that fuchsia messenger to sea wherever she is quite a few turns of rain there so the cinder is right i think is best on this little half row Although, the Cultist is really good, too. Cultist is probably slightly better. Yeah, and then what are we going to get? Which organic is going to be first? Oh, that's actually pretty good for us, because it's a lot of rain set up. That's actually really nice for us. Uh, the, thing, the only thing it does is make Cinder Fizz right pretty bad. It gives us this Cultist. But he gave us a ton of rain setup for free. So we're just gonna click on it. These two I don't really want to click. So we're not gonna need that much rain. We call his leader. And we do want to keep in mind that I want to save specials for later. Because he's gonna fill our rows up next turn. Which means, is a Gremist or a Malusian Cultist more value? Probably the Gremist, just in case he plays a She Who Knows or something. We have Alchemy in our hands, so we can purify here. And then clicking these might just give us damage, based on how many turns of rain we already have out. This is just going to, this is just going to come down to Messenger to see winning the game for us. For the round, I mean. Knew that was coming. I think we bring back a Malusine Cultist here. He didn't actually have the... I thought he was going to go for the, um, the... Activate all the Death Wishes and then use two Leader Charges. That would have filled up two more on each row. I guess we still have one more slot. Uh, bring back Malusine Cultist, I guess, then. What do you need? I want an odd number on a row, so that he loses a rat, so we'll put it here. And then again, we have enough rain for now, next turn we just play Spores, and reset that, and then we play a Leader Charge. If he plays Glusty Warp next turn, we can do that there too. 
Never mind, we're sporzing that Jotun. Oh, that's a pretty big one. Uh, so we're going to spawn this rain here. We actually can save our leader charge. We get two points by using it. I think we're fine here. Lusty Warp's going to be what? Each of these he consumes from us gives him three because we lose one he gets two. So three, six, nine, twelve. 15, 18, plus 6, 24. If we hit this, he gets another, what, 1? It's 25. So let's see, we're 25, that's into 61. He has to play Gusty Warp and his other card. So I think we just force the Yoan and keep this leader charge. And let's see what happens here. He still has another turn of Messenger after this, too. So, unless it's something crazy like Lusty Warp, Combo, I don't even know. If he has another, um, what is it, one of these, he gets 8 points, or 9 points from Ekinomaru consuming, then the rats give him 6 points. So that could potentially be 9 plus 6 15, and 25 is 40, then we get rain damage though, I don't think he has it. There's the Lusty Warp. That's what 24 I said. Yep. And then a bridge trail. Oh, okay. So that's going to be GG here. It's a good thing we kept playing that round one, but this is exactly what you want to do. The deck is very flexible. Very nice. All right. The last game was really good to show how the deck can do stuff, even without an ideal hand. Like, we didn't get Yadneath. We never got Malustine. But we were able to take the round one from mostly Messenger to the C value, and then we took for round two. Again, Messenger at the C. She's really the key card. Alright, looks like we're going to be going up against Meditating Mages. This is much easier with Falmar. Without Falmar, it's just Meditating, or it's just uh, Messenger at the C again. Again, I want control as much as possible here. I don't think we need two Freya's Blessings, although I do want one in case he kills us. Delirium, really solid. Uh, Spore is not going to be great. We should be all right here. Defender, the Gremis is the card we're missing, obviously. But nothing to do about that. We'll just have to heat wave here. Uh, Leticia or well, the thing is, we only have Delirium for six damage right now, so we want him to play that now, and then we'll hit it with this Delirium. That'll kill it. Pretty good start. Unfettered corrupts both body and mind. Get rid of that. Oh, we have to worry about Idarin. I actually can't kill Idarin yet. But then we can get a gutting slash on him and still get like one copy from it probably. I think we just go get a Nyth next. Get a Nyth, then we have Lucine Cultist. Or we can just go Leader Charge, Bride. Serious matter. I think we wake up. We, we can't wait a turn because Delirium won't hit. We can Gutting Slash though. We need to develop Gedanyeth. The thing is, if he starts playing all in this row, Delirium will like not hit the right targets. But if we just go Rain Charge, we can then Gutting Slash down the Leticia. That shouldn't be bad. So we'll go with the Gedanyeth. We'll match his ranged row, so our cultist can throw down that row. Most likely he'll put chapter wizards ranged if he has it. So probably he'll put Dar in melee if he has it. Oh, he's actually going for the students. Interesting. Very interesting. We can kill that Gutting Slash, but that's not the not best high. target. So instead, we'll drop a Leader Charge of Rain. I need to set up the Gutting Slash to kill something next turn. It also lets our Malusian Cultist start boosting. And then we'll throw this out. If it's just students not meditating mages, we're fine, I think. It's just students. Okay, we'll kill the Leticia next turn. Well, I guess next turn is this turn. If we go for our Delirium here, it does 6 damage, he has 8 total. It could miss. 
Like we could get, uh, we could kill Lysia five times, or something like that. Hit her five times. But I think we can actually take a turn potentially here to set up Messenger. Wouldn't be bad either. Leticia is only at five. That's a lot. I think we kill her. But yeah, yeah. Let's not be greedy. We'll kill her. Make sure she's gone. We'll hold off on the cultist order for another turn. So we've gone through his defender, his owner Mancy, and his renew thus far. That's pretty solid. This could still be difficult though. We don't have a messenger to see out, which is our big play. And look at Leticia, these are going to not be super good. Alumni won't be a threat yet. If we can make him leave the round before the four gets reached so he can't zeal alumni, that'd be our ideal scenario here. Now, if we take a look at the situation here, just thinking about it, he's in trouble. Yeah, that's right. So this is why I run so much control. What do I think about the deck? Would I change? I've actually changed the deck quite a few times because usually I play Rage of the Sea Rain, my favorite deck. So I've actually changed this quite a bit. This is the version I like the most. So there won't be any card changes in here. In the beginning, I talked about the Falmar option and the Ryokan the Undying option and why we're not running them. You certainly can. You can also run in your own Xavier. The issue that, well, the deck isn't too vulnerable to stuff. I took out stuff like the half Free Singer, even though it's one of my favorite cards, wherever she is. And the Heimei Flamenica. For the simple fact that Control is really popular, especially six damage Control, with stuff like Idara and Meditating Mages everywhere, Leticia's six damage is a lot more popular, and then they don't get value because they're the best targets for that in your deck. So we're actually not running them right now. That's how we put the provisions into more control of our own, which I quite like. The main issue for the deck, the biggest weakness you have... It, no, here's the thing, the, th the deck is very flexible, you can handle almost anything. What you can't always handle are really, really heavy control decks with their own point slam. So, Precision Strike, uh, Gord Orbs is one example I can think of. I played a game against them before recording this video. I was actually gonna, I did record the game. Uh, I was just, I recorded a game against that for this video, but it was 27 minutes long, so I cut it out. Uh, we ended up losing round three, 54 to 47. But uh, yeah, I won't include that one just because it was, <laughs> I mean, that's half the length of a normal video, so uh, I cut that one out. Maybe I'll put, I don't think I'll put in highlights of it either. It wasn't, it was a very good game, but that's the kind of stuff you can struggle with. But usually you have a lot of answers and you shouldn't have too much trouble with a bad hand here. You have Owner Mercy for Consistency, Get an Eth Fuchsia. There's a lot of cards here. You could add more Consistency with Maxi. That's the Delirium slot here. I cut Maxi for Delirium for the six damage control because because Leticia, stuff like that's really annoying. And it's nice to replay this with Bride sometimes. And then it also sets up Bloodthirst for Gunning Slash. But, so that's, I think we talked about most of the card options in the beginning this time. A little weird. Um, I wouldn't blame you, by the way, if you want to play Tears of the Siren. That's kind of, it's kind of fun. And then also you can have the Crow Clan Preachers pretty good too. I think I mentioned them earlier. But, how I like the deck, I quite like it. The, there's no, no crazy combo finisher with Thalmar, Ryogan, the Undying. That's not in here. But what you have instead is more consistent, more consistency, more control to deal with your opponent's stuff. And overall, the deck works quite well for me. And I think that's all I have to say about it. It's really fun. Compared to the old rain deck with Dagger, obviously this one has more overall power to it, which is nice, because that deck got me to like 2480-something. 24, yeah, like that. Really high last season, and the season before too. So this is the Xelgo deck I like to run. And I've played a whole bunch of games with this one. It's really interesting. I quite like it. You can answer almost any threat. And that flexibility, in my opinion, makes it really good. The other, oh, to mention threats, you, the only thing you really have to watch out for is Yurden, because your big card is going to be your Messenger of the Sea. 
And if they yurt in the row with Messenger of the Sea, well, then you have a problem. But you can usually get around that by having Malusine in that row and damaging stuff. It's a really solid deck. And I hope you guys enjoyed this because this version took me quite a while to perfect. I'm not saying it's perfect, but like this is the version I like. So I got to that over quite a bit of time. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys like it as well. Rain is actually very strong now. And I don't think it's because of Ryogan the Undying. I think it's just because there's enough consistency to actually make the deck good. Which is kind of what I said in the older Blue Scene videos. There's just not enough rain to make it super strong. But now there is. And you have Messenger of the Sea, which is fantastic. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. And we'll see you next time.